I'm being told it's time to go live. So how is everybody? I hope you are ready to learn some English. Today's topic is all about shaving. So English phrasal verbs, some regular verbs we use, some vocabulary words. By the end of this lesson, you will know how to talk about shaving, hair removal, some body parts that we shave. I hope it's going to be a good time. A huge thank you to all the channel members. Uh, my name is Brent. This is American English with this guy. If this is your first time here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you don't mind, hit the, uh, hit the old thumbs up. Before we get started, I would like to give a, a big shout out to the channel members. Let's see, how do I do this? Is this going to work? Oh, yeah. So here we go. Let's just scroll down through and recognize all of the current channel members. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. There are quite a few. There are quite a few. Some names you probably have seen in here before. So a huge thank you to all the channel members. Some have been around for probably close to a year and a half. So thanks so much. And a happy new year to everyone watching. Hey, Yawin's in the house. Thank you so much. I received a, a bunch of goodies from Yawin yesterday. Thank you so much. I hope everyone has a happy new year. Maria, how are you? Freddie Wolf from France is here. Hi, Brent. There you go. 2021 has only a few more hours left to live. 2021 is gone somehow. Let's hope 2022 will be a little better. We'll see. Happy New Year's Eve to everyone. Thank you, Freddie Wolf. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. All right, Yulia's here. Sonar is here. Hope everyone is doing well. Audi the ties here. Glad to see you on Insta, uh, D Discord. Discord now. Constantine is, is here. So let's, hey, Luke. Dr. Luke from Poland is here. Welcome. Welcome. So let's get started with the lesson. This is all about shaving. And the first thing I have that I would like to uh, share with you is an idiom. And we say the elephant in the room, the elephant in the room. Elephant in the room means this. The elephant in the room means something that everyone knows, but no one is talking about. Let's say you're getting together with some friends and maybe one of your friends recently broke up with their girlfriend, their boyfriend, Maybe they got divorced and you know this happened. They know this happened. You just don't want to talk about it because it's uncomfortable. Well, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I no longer have a beard. I did. I shaved it off. That's a phrasal verb we might use when you have a beard or you have hair and then you take it all away. You shave it off. Um, that was a Christmas present to my wife, but now you can see it's coming back in. We'll talk more about coming back in later. But the elephant in the room is that, yeah, I no longer have a beard, but it's coming back. The next one here, let's get rid of that. The next one, another phrasal verb. Work up a lather, work up a lather. And you can see in that picture that that person's hands are probably rubbing together. That's the verb we could use. They are rubbing their hands together and they're making bubbles. That's what we call working up a lather. Now, you can work up a lather when you're shaving we're going to talk about shaving cream and shaving gel in just a minute, or when you're washing your hands, or when you're shampooing your hair. That is a verb that we sometimes use when you're cleaning your hair. You use shampoo. 
in English, and we can actually use that as a verb. Shampooing your hair. Unfortunately, it's hard for me to grow hair up here. It's much easier for me to grow hair right here. So when you're shaving, you can work up a lather. When you're shampooing your hair, you can work up a lather or when you're washing your hands, those little bubbles, and it seems to get bigger. That's working up a lather. You wanna have a nice lather on your face if you're going to shave. But we're also going to talk about some parts of the body that you could shave too. It doesn't just have to be your face. The next one, look at that. There's a body part. Did you know that we call this your armpits? That's your armpits. And I don't know how many men shave their armpits, but I do know that in the United States, most women, not all, most women will shave their armpits. There's, um, we also have a saying in the United States, like, let's say my town has a really bad part in it. Maybe there's a lot of crime, a lot of violence. You could say that's the armpit of the town. So if there is a bad place, we sometimes call it the armpit. Uh, because let's face it, armpits are not that great. They're usually very dark. And uh, they're one of the first places on your body to start smelling if you don't take a shower. So some women, I would say most women in the United States shave their armpits. I would also say most men do not shave their armpits. Just checking the chat here. Ah, Constantine says there is a similar idiom in Russian to the elephant in the room, but it refers to a clumsy person. Clumsy person. If a person is clumsy, they often fall or bump into things. What? It's already 2022 in Australia? I did not know that. Thanks for sharing, Maria. Aroni is here. Welcome. Hey, another part of your body, I didn't know if you would know this one, but you could shave your chin. You could shave your chin. This part right here is your chin. Right there. Actually, this whole part right here. We call that your chin. And later on in the lesson, we will talk about what it is. If you uh, leave this part, um, if you don't shave this part, we have a name for it. Looks like India's in the house. Spain's in the house. You, uh, I think both will see New Year's before I do. Yeah, we're a little bit later. Yeah, the beard is coming back. It's coming back. The next body part, you could shave, are your cheeks. Yeah. This part of your face, your cheeks. So a lot of people, if they're going to shave, might shave their cheeks. I'm not sure if you know this, but you can also have cheeks on your butt. So there are cheeks on your face, and there are butt cheeks. Not sure if you knew that in English. I figured that I should probably mention it. When else am I going to mention butt cheeks? But yeah, and it's fun to say. If you would like to uh, practice shadowing, I will read this sentence and you can repeat after me. Someone in the comments asked, what is shadowing? Well, some people like to use shadowing to work on their pronunciation. So what you do is when I say the sentence, you either try to say it along with me or you say it right after me so that the sound is fresh in your mind. So here we go. I'm going to read that sentence again, slowly, clearly. 
You can also have cheeks on your butt, your butt cheeks. This butt cheeks is just a, it's just a great term, butt cheeks. But this woman, uh, those are the cheeks on her face. And sometimes people have to say, you know, if they're telling a story and they were embarrassed, they might say, oh yeah, my cheeks got red. Cheeks on my face, not on my butt. Butt cheeks. Fun word to say. Judith, how are you? Welcome. Hey, Miho's here. Miho's here. What? So it's very late in Japan and it's almost 2022. Well, happy New Year's, Miho. Manuel. I see something about armpits and smelling. I'm a little afraid to read this, but let's do it. You must shave your armpits so you avoid the bad smell sometimes. Well, that's true. I cannot argue with that. But I worry that if I shaved my armpits, they would itch. They would itch. So I put on deodorant. I put on a lot of deodorant. Sonara, how are you? Welcome. Shadowing is helpful to improve your pronunciation. Well, I'm glad you think so. Some people don't shadow and some people do. It's just an opinion, but I'm glad you like it. I will, uh, ha <clears throat> excuse me, I will have a couple more sentences you can practice shadowing with. You can also have cheeks on your butt, your butt cheeks. All right, let's get rid of that. Moving on, you might know this. We're going to talk about two different kinds of razors, but a razor is a very common way people shave. Now, I personally do use a razor, and we're actually going to talk about three, three ways that you can shave with a razor and a couple more ways you can remove hair. But that is your typical razor. We also have an electric razor. Yeah, we also have an electric razor. That is what an electric razor is. This can be plugged in, plugged into the wall, or it might run on batteries. Might run on batteries. Now here is the most dangerous one. And I would say most Americans do not use a straight razor. But somewhere on this channel, it's the $100 haircut video I did a few weeks back. The barber used a straight razor on my face. Now, back then I had a beard, but he used a straight razor for this part of my body. And we might say under my chin. Remember, that's your chin. We might say under my chin. And I think he got the tops of my cheeks with that straight razor. But you need to know what you're doing if you're going to use a straight razor. Because I have heard that you can get cut badly with a straight razor. So be careful. Be careful. Yeah, what, what? Watt Watt says, I do not like using an electric razor. Yeah, I don't use it very often either. I have, we're going to talk about trimming. And I do, I'll say that I do have a little trimmer that I use for trimming my beard, not cutting it off totally, just trimming it. And we'll talk about trimming soon. All right. Manual, teacher, you can see all the people who are doing exercise with shaving the skin, even the legs. Is hygienic, hygienic. It's another way to say uh, healthy, clean. Uh, sometimes in the United States, guys will shave their legs if they are swimmers. So in high school, I had some friends who were on the swim team and they shaved their legs. They said it made them go faster in the water. I don't know. Hey, 
Anish says, it gives you a close shave. That is a great term. I did not put that on these slides, but let's talk about that. A close shave. We will talk about uh, smooth as a baby's bottom, but a really close shave means there is no hair left. It's really smooth. My cheek right now is not smooth. It's a little bumpy. It's a bumpy. I don't know. What do you think? Judith is asking the question, which is better? Normal razor, electric razor, or a straight razor? I don't know. Please put in the comments what you think is better. I usually go with just the razor. It's a little quicker. It gives me a close shave, but it's not as dangerous as the straight razor. I think the straight razor would give me the closest shave, but it's a little dangerous. It's a little dangerous. No way. Manuel's father was a barber. He says, I remember I shaved her with this sort of razor. I sharpened it with leather. Ah, interesting. Interesting. So just remember, if you are talking about your father, the pronoun you would use is him, him, her. But I know what you meant. I know what you meant. Judith thinks uh, a normal razor is the best. I know it's the quickest for me. It gives a pretty close shave and it's not too dangerous. We will talk about what happens if you cut yourself. We do have a special term we use with shaving. You can say, oh, I just cut myself shaving. But we have another verb we'll use. The next one, shaving cream. So you can see this person has a nice lather on their hands, and then they will work in that lather on their face, probably. So that is shaving cream. But we also have something called shaving gel. So if you look, one is a little thicker. The shaving gel, it's a little thicker. It's a little bit heavier in your hand. And here, this is a little bit lighter. All right, Miho has a great question here. Do you put a skin lotion on after shaving? I do. I do. Um, Jamie does. I do put a, a face lotion on. So, okay. In the winter here in Maine, we run the heat a lot. So if you live in a cold place in the winter, you probably run the heat a lot. And that dries out your skin. That dries out your lips. Just this morning, I can't remember, in the comments section, somebody mentioned chapped lips this is this is a lesson about shaving but it is an english lesson too so when your lips get really dry and maybe they get cracked we can say your lips are chapped so yes after my shower i do i put on lip balm lip balm i can write that in the chat lip balm b-a-l-m lip balm or chapstick, you will hear both terms. And I do have a lotion for my face and a lotion for the rest of my body. And Judith is wondering, what's the difference between shaving cream and shaving gel? I think when the shaving gel goes on, it goes on a little bit thicker. Yeah, so I prefer a shaving gel. Well, let's talk about how you will talk about the different ways to say you like one thing better than another. And for these next examples, I'm going to use shaving gel and shaving cream because I'm pretty sure some people will like shaving gel better and some people will like shaving cream better. That's why they sell both.
So one way you could say it, we can practice some shadowing if you would like, as the sun is coming through my window, the sun is bright today. You can say, I prefer shaving gel over shaving cream. That is one way to say you like one thing better than another. Another way you can say it is I like shaving cream more than shaving gel. I like shaving cream more than shaving gel. But if you hear an American talking very casually, you know, they're not teaching English, that than will, pre will be pronounced then. Okay, it's spelled with an A, but a lot of people pronounce it just like then. So now I'm going to read that sentence in a more casual way. I like shaving cream more than shaving gel. <clears throat> That's how you would say that sentence if you were just speaking normally. When I'm teaching though, I like to pronounce that A and than also can, C-A-N. Hey, can you pass me that shaving gel? But you will probably hear most Americans say can, can. So <clears throat> let's create this. Can usually is pronounced can and van is usually pronounced then. Okay. Just to hopefully help you with that. Like I said, when I'm teaching, I usually pronounce the A and can and the A and than. But most Americans, if they're talking casually, they will say can and then for than and can. Hope that's not too confusing. Another way you could say you like one thing better than the other is I like shaving cream better than shaving gel. I like shaving cream more than shaving gel. I prefer shaving gel over shaving cream. So just depends on how you want to uh, say it. There are more ways, but I thought that would be a little practice when talking about how you like one thing better than the other. Okay, help me out. You are welcome, you are welcome. We're going to talk about waxing. I don't have a slide for waxing, but that is number 30 we will talk about. Yeah, and we will talk about clippers. We will talk about how you can just, no, no, we will not. No, Anyot, thank you, clip. Personally, I use hair clippers to shave my beard. It's safe and sound for me. Yeah, so you could call them trimmers or you could call them clippers. I forgot that term. Thank you, Anuat. Thank you, Anuat. Um, Zhao. Zhao, I know that's a very common name in Brazil. Are you from Brazil? And what about rather than? Yes, you could. So you could say, I would rather use shaving gel than shaving cream. Okay, you could say that. You could totally say that. There are many ways to say you like one thing better than another in English, and I'm sure you have a lot of ways too. You just need one good way, right? One good way. Okay. Manuel has some advice here. And his father was a barber, so we should listen to this advice. Let me give you a piece of advice. Don't use shaving gel directly. First, soak with warm water on your beard. Oh, that's important. Yeah, you want to wet your beard. That's one way you could say that. Manual. Nicely done. Thank you. I do, do always wet my beard. Any part of my face that I shave, I do try to get wet, excuse me, and with warm water. Very important. Thank you, Manuel. Thank you. Happy New Year, Far Light Z. Brock, happy, happy New Year. 
which one I better use for normal razor? Um, you can just say, I like using a razor. Yeah. If you just say razor, they will know that it's not an electric razor or a straight razor. Yeah. I just use a razor on my face. Yeah, you could say it like that. Yes. Brazil is in the house. Welcome. What's the next one here? Okay. So hair removal. Hair removal is the next one. And basically hair removal is a general term for something like nair, waxing, or electrolysis. And we will get to those terms in just a minute. But in that picture, you will see what looks like waxing, waxing. That is one way to remove hair. Now it might hurt. It might hurt a little bit. But before my wedding, before Jamie and I got married, I did have my eyebrows waxed. We did it just for fun. We went to, I think I had a manicure where they worked on my fingernails. I had a pedicure where they worked on my toenails. And Jamie said, hey, you should wax your eyebrows. And I said, why not? So they did, they put a little wax on my eyebrow and then they ripped it off. You've probably seen this, put on some wax, put on some kind of paper and rip it off. That is waxing. I do not have a slide for waxing. Jamie mentioned waxing after I had done all of the slides and I thought, wow, I should mention waxing. Waxing is one way you can remove hair. India, India is in the house. Kishore, how are you? Welcome. Straight razor. Barack likes the straight razor. Hey, that will give you the closest shave. That's for sure. Nicely done. How's Andrea? How are you? So another way you can get rid of Hair is with nair. And we often use this as a verb. You can say, I am going to nair it. I'm going to nair it. A lot of women will use nair on their legs or their armpits. And that is the way we say that. How are you going to remove that hair? I'm going to nair it. And nair is a product. You can see the uh, the bottle there. It actually says Nair on it. So this sometimes happens in English where a product will become so popular that all of the other types of that product are called by that name. So there are other hair removal gels, but most of them, we just say you're going to Nair it. Another one is Kleenex. Um, Kleenex is a brand of tissue, but oftentimes in the United States, you will hear somebody ask, Hey, do you have any Kleenex? Do you have, uh, can you hand me a Kleenex? They'd simply mean a tissue, but Kleenex was just such a popular brand of tissues. Sometimes Kleenex and tissues can be used interchangeably. Sometimes they are synonyms. Another way you'll hear a brand used for other types of that product is Pampers. So Pampers is a brand of baby diapers. Babies go to the bathroom, you put on a diaper. But there are other brand names besides Pampers. But sometimes parents will just say, hey, the baby is out of Pampers. Can you pick up more? And they simply mean diapers. Ibrahim from Egypt is here. One of the longest channel subscribers, I think, to this channel. He was one of the first. Ibrahim, welcome. Oh, Burak, I agree. 
Hair removal may be the best choice for hairs, but be careful. Lots and lots of pain there. Yeah, when I had my eyebrows waxed, it was pretty painful. I can't imagine somebody waxing their back or other more sensitive areas. Let's just leave it at that, below the belt. I did not talk about a Brazilian here. This is a family channel, but you can look that up if you would like what a Brazilian means in English. It's not, sometimes it's a Brazilian person, like Zhao. Zhao's from Brazil. He's a Brazilian. But if you go into a hair salon and say, give me a Brazilian, it's quite different. It's quite different. You can also get electrolysis. Electrolysis. So I think they use electricity somehow. And I think we're going to get to uh, hair follicles in a minute. Hair follicles. But with electrolysis, it looks like they use a wand. We could call that a wand to get rid of the hair. And with electrolysis, the hair is never supposed to come back in. It's never supposed to regrow with electrolysis. Yeah, yes, keep it family friendly. Exactly. I'm moving on from the Brazilian, the Brazilian. If anybody would like to mention it in the comments, you can certainly Google what Brazilian is. Yeah, electrolysis. Uh, let me pronounce that a couple times. Electrolysis. It's not easy. Electrolysis. Electrolysis. You have to bounce that last uh, syllable off the other one. Electrolysis. Electrolysis. And I mentioned um, for another word, I can't remember which word in another lesson. And I said... If you bounce your head, it helps. And Yelena, Yelena, sorry, from Russia, said it works. Electrolysis. Electrolysis. There was another one, though, where there were three S's at the end, I think. English, right? It's weird. A lot of uh, English is weird. Yeah, I didn't do a lesson on goals for 2021, 2022. But uh, Ibrahim, I know, is a big goal setter, and he is doing some great stuff with his languages. He knows uh, Arabic, of course. He knows English very well, and he, he's been working on his German for 2021. I wonder, what are your goals, Ibrahim, for 2022? Any new languages, or are you still working on English and German? Uh, say, hey, Cecilia, how are you? Yeah, the S's, electrolysis, electrolysis. Uh, yeah, I think we can use that. Zabeda, how are you? Um, can we use electrolysis as a verb? I don't know. I think you could say, I'm going to have some electrolysis done today. So I don't think we could use that as a verb. A lot of these you can't, like I said, with nair, you definitely can. Nair is a noun and it's also a verb. It's a great question, Zobeda. I don't think so. Um, how are you going to remove that hair? I'm going to have electrolysis done. Yeah, I don't think you could. Yeah. Good question. I don't think so. Hey, geez. Yeah, I hope... Uh, you remember just not part of the hair removal lesson here and shaving, but you remember last year we said, oh, 2020, such a bad year. 2021 is going to be better. I think it was pretty much the same, maybe a little better, maybe a little better, but we need, we need better ones, right? We need better years ahead. Audie the Thai says, our people call – Pampers more than diapers. If you go to the store and ask for diapers, oh, nobody will know in Thailand. So you call them pampers. 
Interesting. Interesting. Oh, pamper can also be a verb though. How about that? Speaking of verbs, if you pamper yourself, it means you take care of yourself. And if I heard someone is going to pamper themselves, I would think they would go to a day spa, maybe get a massage, maybe get some electrolysis, take care of that hair on their, how about this, this part of your body? Excuse me. Uh, we might call that your upper lip, upper lip. Constantine says seven hours until the new year in Russia. We have a bit more time. How much do we have? Yeah, we have well over, we have about 15 hours here. Alex, what's going on? Welcome. All right, nice. Nice. So Ibrahim is going to work on making his English and his German even better. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be working on my Italian. That's it. I, I, I look at Portuguese and I look at Russian every so often, but uh, I just, Italian is, is where it's at for me. It's where it's at. All right, the next one. Hey, yeah, I love it. I love Toy Story. I had a buzz mug too. I left it on the roof of my car and it broke. But I did have two small children I was trying to take care of. I buckled them into their car seats, started driving. I forgot about the mug. I remembered the children. I forgot about the mug. All right, continuing with the lesson, what, what? One, one hour to go for the new year. So this is a term you can use. I would actually use it right now. And that is my beard is just starting to come in. Just starting to come in. So you would use this if you actually want to grow hair back after shaving it all off. So my beard is just starting to come in. And you can see this guy, it looks like he's shaving it. It was just starting to come in, but he didn't want it anymore. So he shaved it, just starting to come in. The next one, whiskers, whiskers. Now you can see, hey, does anybody know the name of that animal there? What is that? The name of that animal. I will wait for a second. If you're listening to the podcast, of course, you won't be able to answer. I'm so sorry about that. But what is that animal? He or she definitely has whiskers. Definitely has whiskers. While we are waiting for an answer for that, let's talk about who can have whiskers. And you see that picture there. They're little hairs that come out on your face. Whiskers. Men have whiskers. We really don't use the term for women. But cats and dogs can have whiskers. And of course, this animal too. Oh, uh, ooh. I think both would work. What, what? I think... I think we could call that a sea lion. Absolutely. And you might be right. <laughs> I was thinking seal. But it might be a sea lion. And it almost looks like another animal we call in English a walrus. But I, I think it is a sea lion. Yeah. And sea lions, um, that I believe is... I believe is two words, all right? Nicely done, Wat Wat. So I think that's a sea lion or a seal, maybe a walrus, I don't know. So Judith knows it in Hungarian, but of course it's really hard in English. 
And to be honest, I mean, how many times are you going to need to say the name of that animal in English? So if you know it, bonus. But should that be one of the words you study? Probably not. But whiskers, maybe. So I do. So a beard is made up of many whiskers. If you want a phrasal verb there, a beard is made up of many whiskers. And we'll talk about the different kinds of facial hair you can have. So I just used face as an adjective, facial hair, facial hair. See, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, Audie. I was thinking seal until Wat Wat said sea lion. So I, li I like sea lion better. Okay, Constantine, great question. Is mustache, and I actually have mustache here somewhere. Mustache, right there. So is mustache and whiskers the same? That's a great question. No, they're not. Your whiskers are the little individual hairs. So on my head, I would say I have hair. These are the hairs on my head. But these are the whiskers on my face. Now, if you say hair, will people know what you're talking about? Of course they will. But if you want to be a little more specific, you can call these whiskers whiskers. But I was talking with Jamie last night and she agreed that whiskers really aren't for women. I mean, if women shave their armpits and the hair grows back, it would be, it would be whiskers. We just don't call it whispers. I think I have, I do have this, but we will talk about this word here later. I think we will. Let's see, do I remember stubble? I don't I don't think I put stubble. Hmm. I don't think I put stubble. So uh, let's um I'm going to uh, add one here and talk about stubble because that might be something we would call uh, women's hair that comes in. Men too. You could call the whiskers on my face right now stubble. It's when they're really short whiskers. Let's see here. I don't think I have stubble and I should. So let's pull up a, a Google search here. So stubble, it has two beards, uh, two Bs two Bs, and it's just when the hair starts coming in. So you can see just little tiny whiskers, stubble. What is this? And a lot of times these don't really help, right? These definitions here, but short, stiff hairs growing on a part of the body that has not been shaved for a while, especially on a man's face. Now that's a great definition right there. Short, stiff hairs. If something is bendy, I got this thing here. Um, sorry for the crinkling, but I might call this bendy right here. This, it's bendable. I can bend this. This is just a tripod. Uh, this is just a stick I use for my camera. Um, this is stiff. I can't bend it. Stiff. So just in case you didn't know the difference between bendy or bendable and stiff. So that's actually a pretty good definition right there. Get rid of this banner. And I'll read it one more time. Short, stiff hairs growing on a part of the body that has not been shaved for a while, especially on a man's face. That is stubble. I do not think we have a slide for stubble. Hope that helps. Hope that helps. Bendy, bendy. 
Um, I might have made that word up. I'm not sure if you can. No. Uh, bendy. So if something is bendable, it is bendy. I don't, I don't know if that's a real word, but you will hear bendy. Oh my gosh. I do not have handlebar mustache as one of our terms, but since Aroni mentioned it, a handlebar mustache, it covers the upper lip and then you have two things that go down. One of the most famous handlebar mustaches is on a uh, wrestler named Hulk Hogan. Can I pull up a handlebar mustache for this guy? All right. This is a, a handlebar mustache. It will take me just a second to pull this up. But yeah, I did not plan on handlebar mustache. But there you go. That's one of the most famous handlebar mustaches right there. Make it a little, can I make it bigger? No, I don't think I can make it bigger. But yeah, handlebar mustache. I think that's his wife. She does not have a handlebar mustache, but handlebar mustache. It's a little, it's hard to see there. But yeah, thanks, Aroni. Handlebar mustache. All right, we have a couple, a couple other ones. We got to go back though, I think. Where do we end right here? We, we, we were just talking about whiskers. Whiskers. All right, Ibrahim is, is out of here. Have a good walk. And I'm hoping that um, you will put on this podcast or you will put on this video and go for a walk. You can hear a native English speaker talking about whiskers and bushy beard. We'll get to that in a little bit. Hulk Hogan. Yeah, brother. If anybody knows Hulk Hogan. Yeah, brother. Eat your vegetables, brother. That's what he always says. Brother. Now, hair follicles. That's the next one. Hair follicles. And you can see on that picture, a the follicle is right at the bottom. So we have individual hairs and where the hair comes out of the skin, we would call that a hair follicle, hair follicle. I'll pronounce that a couple times, hair follicle or hair follicles, hair follicles. Hopefully that helps. The next one is a five o'clock shadow, five o'clock shadow. And this term comes from when a man shaves in the morning and by five o'clock in the afternoon, a little hair has grown on his face. And that is called a five o'clock shadow. So this man right here definitely has a five o'clock shadow, but he might have a couple more days of growth than just a five o'clock shadow. A couple days of growth is one way you can talk about if you haven't shaved in a couple days. Yeah, on this, on my face now, I have about a, oh, let me say it correctly. I have about a week's worth of growth. Not easy to say. I have about a week's worth of growth here on my face. So, but some me, some people might call it a five o'clock shadow. Next one is an adjective to describe those stiff hairs, that stubble. We might say it's prickly. We might say it's prickly. And if you look, that little guy right there, ooh, what is that thing called? Another animal. You will probably never need to say in English, oh, Pashu has a five o'clock shadow right now. Very nice. Pashu, are you from are you from Nepal? I think you were in last night's uh, English lesson. Last night for me. But I think uh, which is very cool. Yes, I yes, Dennis. Dennis, I would say that's a little hedgehog. 
Yeah, and if you touch the top of him or her, it's probably pretty prickly. Probably pretty prickly. Not easy to say. And the other picture you might know is a cactus. Cactus. And um, let's talk. Let's talk about the plural for cactus. You might hear cactuses, cactuses, or you might hear cacti. So the plural might end with an I. And remember, we uh, the English language has been influenced by Latin. So there are a couple English words that still might have a plural I. So um, one is octopus, that animal that lives in the sea, or octopi, if there are more than one octopuses in the sea. But you can also use octopuses if you would like. It's kind of fun to say. If you're alone in your room, you can practice saying octopuses. Or if you're watching this from a library or the subway and you don't care, feel free to say octopuses out loud. Who cares, right? Uh, there's another word, alumni and alumnus. So I graduated from a university called the University of Alabama. So I am an alumnus of that university. But if there were a bunch of us, like my wife and I, we are alumni of the University of Alabama. So that's just one kind of weird word in English that might have an I at the end. I wouldn't study. I wouldn't study that too much because it's pretty rare. Yeah, you definitely need to be careful with octopuses. Yeah, be careful with that pronunciation. Kind of goes along with Brazilian, but we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about that here. This is a family channel. Octopuses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you don't know what uh, somebody is talking about, and you're on the subway, and you just hear somebody say octopuses, you might uh, you might scoot over a little bit. That's what we, that's the verb we might use, scoot over. If you're trying to give somebody some room on the subway, hey, could you scoot? Could you scoot? You might hear that sometimes. Yes, always family friendly, always family friendly here. The next one, you might hear this man has a bushy beard. So bushy is another adjective we might use with beard. And it just means a really full beard. That man, I would say he has a bushy beard, an impressive beard, but it is also very bushy. The next one, we could say this man, he is clean shaven. He does not have a beard. He's clean shaven, clean shaven. See if I have any more. Yeah, I went over all of the shadowing practice that I had. So this man is definitely clean shaven. But what happens if you cut yourself while you're shaving? You can definitely say, I cut myself. But we often will say, I nicked myself. And a nick is a really small cut. And a lot of people, when they have cut themselves shaving, they might put on little pieces of toilet paper. And that helps stop the bleeding. So if you nick yourself, you might put on little pieces of toilet paper. Not easy to say. Not easy to say. The next one is against the grain. 
against the grain. So when you are shaving when you're, with your razor, let's, let's pretend uh, this is my razor, I might go down on my face. But if I want to get an even closer shave, I might go against the grain. Against the grain, I would shave in the opposite direction of how the hair comes in. So going up, that would be shaving against the grain. And that comes from uh, wood, wood grain. And if you are sanding wood, you can sand against the grain. So it's like in the opposite direction. But sometimes we will say that for shaving. You can shave against the grain. But problems can happen if you shave against the grain. You might have an ingrown hair. And that is when a, a hair might get infected. It might hurt. And then you might have to pull it. And the uh, tool that's being used in that picture is something we call tweezers. So if you have an ingrown hair, you might have to pull it out with tweezers. Oh, and I think this has been mentioned in the chat already, but sometimes you can get razor burn. And that is when the razor burns your skin, it will get red, it will hurt, it might itch. Yeah, that is razor burn. I believe that picture, yeah, that man's face, his skin is quite, quite red. Yeah, you could say, I mean, it literally means, it literally means against the hairs, but I think we would say against the grain. If you say against the hairs, people will know. People will know what you're talking about. Hey, I think this. Erroni. He sent me this, this little pocket guide of his city, Milano. Milano. And I have read, I have read through this a little bit. I, I kind of know what some of it's saying right there. Il primo piano, the first floor, the first floor, right there. The museum, and this is so close to English, but it's the uh, National Museum of Science and Technology, I believe. Hopefully one day I can visit. I think right here it says, uh, like, don't miss, don't miss, I think. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, I love this thing. Love this thing. So thank you. Aroni. Grazie mille, amico mio. Grazie mille. All right, the next one. Mustache. We have talked about that, haven't we? Just, just this part right here. Mustache. The next one. A goatee. So you don't shave this part of your face. You might have a mustache, so your upper lip has hair, and your chin has hair. That's a goatee. That man right there, looks like he's got a goatee. You could connect the mustache with the hair below the chin or on the chin, but you don't have to. Sideburns. Sideburns. So it's actually the opposite of a goatee. It's where just the side of your face has hair. And if they are really bushy, if the sideburns are really bushy, you might hear them called lamb chops. Lamb chops. or mutton chops. So that is when the sideburns 
are really bushy. Sideburns. The next one. Is this the last one? This is the last one. I cannot advise you to grow a soul patch. Maybe if you are in a rock band, I don't know how many people can actually pull off a soul patch. And when I say pull off, it means make it work, not pull off. I don't know how many people can pull off a soul patch. That means I don't know how many people can have a soul patch and make it look good. I mean, this guy does. Maybe he's in a rock band, but the soul patch is when you have just a little patch of hair below your lip. That is a soul patch. Ah, yes. Arani. If you know the Marvel comics or the movies, they're not actually Marvel movies. I think they're Fox movies. But yes, if you know Wolverine, he definitely has mutton chops. For sure, those big, bushy sideburns. India is in the house again. Welcome. Welcome from India. Namaste. Namaste. All right, that is the lesson on hair removal, on shaving. We've gone about an hour. I hope you learned a little something. If you're listening on the podcast, do you mind giving me a rating? Rating this, maybe leave a review saying how much you are learning from this podcast. If you don't mind, subscribe, hit the like button, all of that stuff. Thank you so much for joining, and uh, I will see you next time. Have a happy new year.